Hello, reader. Welcome to 20 Questions with Your Favorite Author, where we ask authors important questions like, why would you agree to be on this podcast? I'm Kelly Lynn Colby, Editorial Director at Curse Dragon Ship Publishing. Our guest this week is Theodore Neurotech Tinker, world builder and editor extraordinaire. Todd supports his many literary endeavors with an endless supply of chocolate, which he hoards in his library alongside his books like any good dragon. If he's not your favorite now, he will be after. Welcome, Todd. How are you this evening? I am doing well. That's excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. We're, we're going to get to all of our hard-hitting questions. They're really important, you know. And remember, audience, when you have questions, please put them in the chat, and I will make sure to read them. And if you are listening to this at home on your podcast on some other time besides Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Central, you're missing out because this is the fun. <clears throat> so let's start. Question number one. Where do you get your ideas? Oh, uh, sometimes I'm not really sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they kind of form out of the Um So, so as you said, I'm a world builder. So a lot of the times, my work, my the ideas for my stories often start with a world. Um, to to really illustrate where my ideas come from, um, I do. I not only do I write. Um, books, big books. Um, but I also do a monthly short story for my Patreon page. And I, for those, I will, basically I offer my community a, a poll of four ideas and be like, tell me what you want me to write about. And I will take that idea and basically form a world around it. Say, what, what kind of world would this idea require? And kind of go from there. So that's what I do for like my short stories. For the bigger projects, it's more it's more uh, pull an idea here, pull an idea there, kind of put them together to shape a world, see how that world grows. Um, I'm also I I also have a world forming in my Patreon short stories where I think I have four short stories now that are are in the same world. <laughs> nice. So someday this shall be a series. I can see it forming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, what a great way to work out the kinks of the world through short exactly. stories. That's very clever. So where is your favorite place to write? Um, These days at this desk in this library. <laughs> it, it took me a little while to finally get the um, atmosphere in this library the way I wanted. It. I used to do both editing work and writing in here and I was really cramped I had two desks back to back I had a sh small bookshelves on either side because I was kind of like hemmed in and eventually I was like you know what there's room we so I eventually was like you know what I need to change <laughs> so <laughs> you didn't like the hermit in his cave kind of thing uh -oh. I mean it, it, it was it was hindering the creativity I was I was feeling like I couldn't write so, so, so I now have my work desk in a completely different room. The small bookshelves, like this one, or like this one, <laughs> um, move to the walls. Amazingly enough, they fit. And, um, and now I have a single desk in a room that only has bookshelves on the walls and nothing else in it. So it's much more spacious, much more open to be able to write and... Yay, ideas. They flow better. Excellent. Literally flow better. There's more space now. Exactly. Let's see. Dave wants to know, when writing, does your editor brain ever get in the way of your writer brain? Or do they always work in harmony? Oh, God. Yes. They <laughs> always. Um, so, so you know that rule about kick the editor out and just write? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it yeah. took me years to finally get around to potentially doing that. Um, I have learned personally that I do better when I handwrite. Um, it means I. It means it's a lot more difficult to go back and change things. Um, so it restricts me to only adding a missed word or like correcting a name if I got a name wrong or something like that. So small corrections that need to happen so I don't lose track of things. Um, otherwise, it's full steam ahead. Deal with it in the edits. <laughs> It's a discipline that's so hard to overcome, especially with the editor brain. I get that. Yeah. 
Uh, Jenny wants to know, did you publish short stories or a book first? Oh, I lied. Cassie wants to know. <laughs> um, great, cash, great question, Cassie. I actually published um, my books first. Um, my, my, so Piece of Evan, my Piece of Evan series is my published fantasy works right now. Um, they began as Piece of Evan Missing Air long time ago. <laughs> um, back when I was only doing self-publishing and before I really knew what I was doing and therefore it didn't look that great. Um, I, I'm the type of person that I've been all through this, through this all, through all of this before. So do as I say, not as I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I published my books first, um, or began publishing the books first. I actually had the misfortune, or rather, I didn't reach out to community until after I'd uh, published my first book. So I didn't have a writer community until after Missing Air was published. Wow. You found yeah. us later. Yep. Well, we're glad that you did. Well, technically, so I found you. You were already involved, but it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe later. Let's see how many questions we get through first. Uh, what did you start, or sorry, why did you start editing professionally? Um, so that, that's an, that's a great question because, um, so I think, I think I had all three of my, uh, current books published at the time. I have been working on missing on the fourth book in that series forever. <laughs> Cassie will remind you. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Um, don't worry. I, I'm planning to start, start getting back into, I'm actually working on getting back into that this year. Um, but, uh, so I'd had the, I had my current three books already published. I was working with um, critique groups in um, working on Forgotten Goddess, which is the fourth book in my Evon series. And um, the, basically one of the, the, there were people in my critique group that noticed that I was really good at catching the grammar and punctuation and, and stuff on the critiques, even though, you know, we're supposed to focus on the larger things. Um, but it's distracting. <laughs> Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And and so that that question came up as to as to had I did I do this professionally and I didn't have the training for it. So I didn't feel comfortable um, trying to get into it unless I had the tr or at least the, until at least I started doing the training for it. Um, so I went to my editor, found out how what she had done. So she had gotten her certificate from the University of Chicago. I was like, perfect, I'll do that. <laughs> I could do that. Exactly. And that's how that's how it all started. Excellent. Yes, for those who don't know, Todd actually edited my fantasy series. So yep. he did a great job straightening out all the things, calling me. Do you know what a, a crenellated castle really is? Because I don't think you've used this word correctly. I'm like, I don't know. Just fix it. Sorry. <laughs> I uh, actually do remember that specific. Uh -huh. <laughs> I remember that one too, because I'm like, I looked it up. I'm like, apparently I looked it up wrong. Anyways. See, dictionary, you need a good editor. A dictionary can't fix it all fix it all for you. Let's see. Roger wants to know what do you find most rewarding? Books or short stories? Um so they both have their own rewards, I think. Um the short stories provide variety. They provide me an easy, an e an easy dive into different worlds. Um it's actually be, because I don't have to worry so much about um, a larger world that I'm building in for the short stories, um, it's it's a lot easier for me to throw the story together kind of thing. Whereas with a larger story, I'm going, does this fit the world? Is, it, is this the reasoning for the world kind of thing? But with the larger stories, the size of the world just kind of awes me sometimes uh being able to get lost in it and being able to find those aha moments of this is why this is happening i remember waking up one time and going oh my god this character who is a goddess who's incarnated as a dragon for two thousand years earlier that was the reason why magic messed up <laughs> that'll do it yep that'll do it so yeah i i agree i think the short stories have made me a better writer 
I was able to dive into character better, which was my weak point as well. So being able to dive into the character better for the short story really taught me more about character when I'm writing a bigger, bigger work. And for me, one of the things that short stories does really well for me is teaching me to look at the more compact um, situations, to be able to look at a single situation, uh, to, to, to say that, okay, there is a larger situation going on, but I want to focus on a single point of it to be able to write the short story. It's also helped. It's also helped me with when I need to help a uh, another writer go from large writing to much narrower <laughs> works like short stories. It's definitely a different skill set. It is. Oh well, the first time one of the first well the first thing I ever saw you teach anyway was world building, and you mm -hmm. said you use that as that's what inspires you the most is the world building. Yes. So I guess it makes sense that you publish the fiction tinker's guide to whimsical worlds. Exactly. So. What, what is, why did you finally decide to write this all down now? Um, it's been coming for a while. So, God, how, I don't even know how, how, how long ago it was a couple of years ago, maybe a little longer. Um, um, I've been, I've been with, I've been part of a group on Facebook that's called Creative Central. Um, it was founded by Debbie Burns, um, ba Balance of Seven, my press, uh, which is me and my business partner, Inez Freeman. Um, I love her. Right. Uh, she, we we were we ran it after Debbie um, needed to move away from the from the group. Uh, and then we passed it on to uh, a couple of ladies when we needed to move on from the group. But um, I think either before we took it over or like right after we took it over, I started doing uh, my editing tip, tidbits in that group, which have which which have evolved over time, moving from Creative Central onto my own personal and business um, social media and are, were the source for this book, or the original source for this book. And so it's it's been a process of just the next step, basically. And um, big instigation of it was Ina's. Um, she was like, you know, you need to do you need to do a book for these. <laughs> And, and it was, and I, I will tell you, this is, we've already got plans for four more books in this series. Nice. It's going to yes. be a series. That's exciting. It's going to be the fiction. It, the series is going to be the fiction tinkers guide series. And then uh, we're going to, we're, I'm doing world building creatures, uh, fantasy, sci-fi, and then the nuts and bolts, basically. Grind, ge greasing the gears is going to be the, the final one. Excellent. Love it. That's a great idea. We'll I have to have you back on so you can talk all about it. Exactly. Well, in your fantasy series you talked about earlier, mm -hmm. your main character bonds with a dragon and a horse, yes. which is so cool. <laughs> Why did you choose two bonding mates? You don't see that very often. Um, Part of it might just be because I have a big love of dragons and horses. Um, <laughs> uh, my Growing up, my mom had horses and I had a pony. So so horses have always been a big thing for me. And then dragons, dragons have been part of my life forever, it seems like. But so I'm not I'm not quite sure why it was it ended up being that way, why I decided to choose that. Um, I do. I do. I do parts of inspiration for that that story a lot go go a lot back to Tamara Pierce. Um, she's she was one of my favorite authors growing up um, with the Lioness series and um, um, the Immortals something. I don't remember exactly the name of the series, but it's all in one world. And so you have these strong, you have these strong female characters. Um, one of them pretends to be a uh, pretends to be a boy in order to become a knight. One of them has a small dragon companion. Um, and I think part of it was also she needs a horse. And what better, what better than to have the horse be be part of this bond? Um, it, it's it's interesting to it. It is interesting when I dive into the psychology of that bond, mm -hmm. because, because I've, I've mentioned this in the series specifically where, where the dragon dragons would normally view horses as prey. And, and in order to save Jemmy's life, when, when they first all met, because uh, the dragon accidentally scared the horse and the horse reared and, and tossed Jemmy off. She, he, the dragon had to calm the horse down. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so and so the dragon's decision was to bond with the horse. <laughs> I love it. I'm I'm telling you, my daughter owns a horse and I'm pretty sure the only thing the horse says or thinks is, do you have a treat? And no, I don't want to ride today. The, your horse is much more complicated than that. So I kind of like that aspect too. It's he not is. just a cute animal companion, you know, he's sentient. <laughs> he is also the comic relief for, through yes. for a good point of that series. Yeah. I mean, the seeing as the, the back of the book literally said, calls him a facetious stallion who, who can't recognize nay as a nay. <laughs> Two different spellings of the word Naya there, of course. Uh -huh. Of course, of course. Editor. Um, <clears throat> the uh, It's one of those things we'd only notice if it was wrong, right? Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. There are, what project that's in progress or not started are you most excited about? That would be my Moonshifters um, story. What's so, that? So my next fiction book, um, which the first book, <laughs> so this was supposed to be... <laughs> Okay, this was a long thing, but um, uh, this, so do you remember uh, eclectically magical? No, mm -hmm. eclectically heroic. Eclectically heroic with the horse. Uh, well, yeah, that's the story I ended up with. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the original idea I had to do the for a short story for eclectically heroic was about a knight who is trained to hunt werewolves, ends up being bitten and becomes basically the um, champion for the werewolves. That was the original idea for the short story. Gotcha. I hit 7,500 words and decided that was a book. <laughs> um, so, uh, we have I limits thought... for a reason, people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, so I, I finally had decided in 2018, towards the end, uh, I believe it was August of 2018, I finally decided to set Forgotten Goddess aside because she had been giving me issues for years now, um, and and because we pub we published Rogues and Wildfire through Balance of Seven, and my short story in that was actually a prequel to this story idea. It was set 20 years before, so I was like, people liked this world, people were very excited about it, so I was like, you know what, that'll be my next book. I, I, I started working on it, and a month and a half later, I had 60,000 words for wow. that world, for that story. Um, now, this past January, I finally wrote the end on the, uh, on that manuscript for the first draft. <laughs> and so, and, and of course, because I write long, it is now two books. <laughs> it's how it happens, man. That's how, yeah, it happens. how it happens. I'm going to show eight of nine says, yay, moon shifters. So someone knows what it is and is very excited. That, that might be joy. <laughs> can you, I can you give us the, uh, the elevator pitch for the series? So, uh, like I said, this is it, 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 it. The main idea hasn't really changed all that much. It is about a, um, it's about a young knight who who was trained to trained to fight. They're not werewolves. They're they're shifters. Um, but he grew up knowing them as beasts. That's that was what he grew up knowing them as. Um, gotcha. He grew up knowing them as having killed his parents. Uh, they also were the ones who killed the queen of the of the kingdom, supposedly. And so he he was trained to fight them, and then on his first hunt, got gets bitten, and uh, is changed into a shifter. However, he refuses to shift, and he refuses he refuses to shift. He wants to cling to his duty as a knight. Um, uh, th so there's a sense of morality that, that he, he, he feels that the beasts are evil and he, a lot of the book is him learning what, who is right and who is wrong and what is good and what is evil and, and the, the path towards eventually, uh, accepting it and what more might come from that. <laughs> That is fascinating. I haven't seen anything where they could refuse to shift. So that that alone yeah. makes me fascinated with this world. Uh, let's see. What have you read or watched lately that you've really enjoyed? Uh, Fanishi, you should ask. So one thing I have added to my Patreon this year is I am doing a book a world building book reviews Ooh. where I read a book and, and actually using my... Um, Using guidelines. the breakdowns that I broke, I put in the Fiction Tinker's Guide to Whimsical Worlds, mm -hmm. I go through and look at all the different world building aspects of the book. Um, so That's I actually clever tie in. 
right? Mm -hmm. So I actually posted that um, today, and that I the written ones are for my five dollar tiers and higher, and my video for that, which ended up being two and a half hours long. I did not expect that, but <laughs> um, I'm breaking it up into multiple videos now. But um, <laughs> you really like this series. I really like this series. But yeah, so I finished the book. So the the fir the first book I did for these book reviews, uh, it's called Tinker by Wen Spencer. And and it is a it is a near futuristic um, sci-fi fantasy. So it's basically basically the it takes the idea of of um, the elves and other mythological creatures that used to used to visit Earth and turns out they're on parallel Earths. So they have created technology that opens up a gate to this other these parallel dimensions or parallel Earths. But there was a mistake that was made in the creation of this technology, and it actually takes a chunk of Earth and switch, swaps it with the equivalent Earth or equivalent equivalent land from the other world. So Pittsburgh is now in Elfholm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it's a very it's a very fascinating world, and I'm in, I'm I'm interested to see how he continues to, how they continue to grow. The world throughout the series because there's four more there's three more books in the series mm -hmm. that is fascinating i'm gonna have to look that up i need something like out of the ordinary exactly let's see i know you're a fan of writing retreats having been on a couple with you myself mm -hmm. where would you like to go and write that you haven't had the chance to yet I haven't had the chance to mm -hmm. um <laughs> <laughs> hmm. that's a good question because i've been a few places now, are we talking places I haven't written before or just places I haven't been before? You can interpret <laughs> the question as you wish. Just somewhere you think would be like inspiring to write. You know, as we're all stuck in our rooms, even yeah. if they're nice with shelves on the outside, still stuck in here. So, so okay, then then I'll go with place I haven't written before. Okay. Um, uh, after my wife and I got married, we went to, we, we honeymooned in Washington and I don't remember the exact town name because it's a really small town. Um, but there is a hobbit hole in in Washington that that the exterior looks like a like looks like a hobbit home, and it's it's a tiny three room place that's got a huge bed bedroom bed with a huge bed in it, a kind of rustic bathroom behind it, and a nice little nice tiny little sitting area with a fireplace, and and so that would probably be a good place. That sounds really cool. So you can like Airbnb it? Yeah, it's yeah, it's an Airbnb. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Organize it, I'll sign up. Okay. So and, and I think I think she's actually planning on last I last I heard she was planning on making more of them in that same area and doing like a little commune. So it's like there's a, gonna be a, a common kitchen area and then like three or four of the hobbit holes. So I don't know what her progress is on that, but that was the last I heard. And this lady builds them herself. <laughs> really? Yeah. That would be interesting. We keep looking for a commune for the two dorks community. So maybe the legions of dorks can go help her build some and we could just move. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I could live with the clouds all year round, though. I'm sorry. I, I don't think I can. <laughs> I just can't. I get that weather thing where it's cloudy and I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Like the last week here in Houston. <laughs> yep. Steven says he's in. Legion of dorks. We're going to build hobbit homes in Washington. <laughs> I bet she could use help. She's doing it by herself. She could use helping hands. We could oh, make this wait. work. Yeah. Let's see. Roger wants to know, what is your favorite writing software and why do you like it? I am a word person all the way. Mm -hmm. um, I have tried. Uh, so I've I, I, I don't. So I have so much going on that I don't feel like I can I can take the time to learn a new thing. Um, I'm like, I know word. I stick with it. Uh, the only thing I have found other than word that I like and enjoy um, is the website for the words.com. It's the you number. Are you on there? We need to buddy up. You're going to have to tell me your buddy name. So we it is, it up. has been, a, it has been a while since I've been on there. Um, oh, gosh, mainly gosh. because, mainly because I found that I was, um, even when I was able to keep up with the time, I was not, not I felt like I was not producing very well. Um, so if I do go back to it, it would just be for typing up my handwritten stuff. <laughs> 
I like killing the monsters. I have to gamify my life. My brain exactly. doesn't want to do things. Like, I'll tell you, if you started it, like when you first started writing, right now it's like 700 words, an hour and a half. I'm like, okay, no sweat. Do you see? So it's not, the timing isn't as much of an issue. So I bet you if you went back now, it'd be fine. But man, that completing those quests and killing those monsters and collecting that oh, yeah. works on my brain. It's yeah, ridiculous. I, that was, I'm an adult. That was one of the things I loved about that. Cause I, I'm a, I'm very much someone who, who, if I can, if I, if I can find a way that gam gamifies it, that works for my brain. Cause sometimes even trying to gamify it doesn't necessarily ma make it cooperate, but like that, that group, that game was, I mean, for the words is awesome. <laughs> I love it. And that's the number four for anyone interested in some way to motivate yourself. And I don't use it all the time, but if I'm struggling that day, then for the words is coming up. It's It's got to be there and it will motivate me. Kill these monsters. I'll be like, I've had that quest forever. I'm beating it today. And then before I know it, I've got 2,500 words written. And yesterday I could only write 200, you know, so it works. It works. If your brain works that way, it works. Yeah. But, but on, on, on the side note from that, I, like I said, I have, I have found that handwriting works a lot, works very well for me too. Um, sometimes better because it, it disconnects, it disconnects the editor brain a lot more easily for me. And, and there's just something about the physical part that, that helps things flow a lot better for me. I agree. I think the creativity is better by hand when I'm outlining. I almost always do that by hand. Uh, yeah. So that just helps me. It just, it is easier creativity wise. I don't know why. There's an entire book on that. <laughs> so I, you know, I bet there's lots of books. And if anyone's I, noticing, the whole point to this is there is no right or wrong way. The right yeah. way is the way that works and the wrong way is the way that doesn't. It's just exactly. that. So for me, it's a different thing every day. <laughs> yeah, I, I, as I tell a lot of the people, I, because I do uh, Balance the Seven, we run something called Word Splurge that's a, a three times a week three times a week writing sessions. And then um, I also do Todd's thoughts every Sunday, um, which is half hour to an hour where it's like bring your editing and writing questions. And as I always tell my people, it can, it can change. It changes by person. It can change by project even of, of what you need to do. And if you're ever stuck, I'm always like interview your characters, go explore the world a little bit more, go play with a different world altogether, a different type of story. It, Find ways to vary it up and shake it up. <laughs> <laughs> do whatever you have to. That's what you do. Exactly. Whatever you have to. If you could spend the weekend with one of your characters, who would it be and where would you go? Oh, God. <laughs> That's the fun I have stuff. too many. <laughs> well, you can only choose one. Sorry. It's the parameters of the question. Um, mm, okay. I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm probably have to, gonna have to go with uh, Mama Kaler. Uh, so, so my go-to's on these questions tend always tend to be this, a lot of smaller characters, like that are kind of major minor characters. If if you want to think of it that way, well, it makes so, sense. You want to explore them more. That actually it, makes sense to me. Yeah. Um. And 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 sometimes they're so much more fun. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so Mama Kaler is actually the character that piece of Evan starts out with. Um. She is she is a seer who is the latest in a long line of seers. Uh, basically, this this gift passes from mother to daughter, and has for two thousand years. And she um, so she, and she's human, which is a distinction in my book because this this is a world of elves and and humans and stuff. You just don't see most most people that are not humans for a certain reason. Um, but so she's a human seer. And she is the one who she she saw um, Jemmy's future at her uh, naming ceremony, and um, but her personality she is so she is so much fun. I mean, she's got she 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 she, she can talk her way out of a highwayman heist. She can uh, she she does not take um, uh, she will sass <laughs> she will she will sass a noble. <laughs> <laughs> she she's old very... enough she can get away with it right? oh yeah that, that's mm -hmm. true she's also one of the oldest characters i deal with uh human wise <laughs> i'm looking forward to that age for that reason <laughs> get away with so much more right uh let's see roger wants to know with such large worlds how do you keep track of all the big and small details that you're creating in your story so 
I am fairly good at keeping details in my head, except for names and possibly descriptions of characters and timeline or, or rather dates and lengths of time. So I specifically have a document for timeline and a document for characters. I believe my current Evon document for t characters is 19 pages and timeline four or five. I don't know. I, I haven't looked at it in a while. <laughs> And and my timeline, my timeline not over not only covers the current the existing books, but it goes back to the beginning of human civilization, which is two thousand years before, and then covers a little bit into um, some of the later books. When I as I've as I've been able to figure those out in five pages. Take that term paper, people who make us write twenty pages on nonsense. I it, it might be longer than that. Like I said, it's been a while. <laughs> Plus, it's like bullet points, right? Like, it's just a... Yeah, it's just date, this happened. Date, this person's birthday. Date, there, yeah. So so talking about writing retreats earlier, I woke up at like four something in the morning on one retreat I was on, and my brain was like, okay, you are working on Noble's birthdays today. <laughs> You've been assigned. <laughs> You've been assigned. So I spent, the, I spent the first couple of hours of that day going through going through the ducal lines um, of the the current dukes, their children, and their parents. I, and, 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 and then I ended up doing the, the, uh, the elf emperor and his line. So there's like three of them, three generations of them, because elves live a while. <laughs> yeah, so that, oh, yeah. I mean, that's easy to keep track of, right? I'll tell you, I'm the collector because it's a paranormal thriller, so it's quick. Mm -hmm. When I printed it out, I put what day it was at the beginning of the chapter to make sure yeah. I kept it straight as we were like, okay, this is to, this is the I, evening. So this is still Tuesday. Like I had to keep, cause it's only a week. So I had to keep track. I do. I do that in regular, in any of my writing actually, where I'll mark the day. Uh, that was, that was one thing in moon shifters uh, was I kept having to go, I kept to go, okay, what day is this? And, 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 and when I changed days, or when I, when they started a new day, it's like, okay, Mark, this is the beginning of this day. <laughs> It's like we have to keep this straight because I don't worry about it that much when I'm writing like I a little bit but not that much but when I'm editing I'm like wait this doesn't work hold on I gotta <laughs> exactly yeah um with with my so I have I have kind of a, a, a not necessarily a rule but a tip of if there's if you're having trouble uh if you're tr if you're struggling with tension consider shortening the timeline so after I created that tip my brain, of course, throws me a story that has to be a set time. <laughs> it's like, okay, you're defined by the moon. Damn it. <laughs> now make it work. Ha ha. Yeah. So it was like, it was like, okay, it has to be either half a moon cycle or a moon and a half cycle. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> we have to make this work. Let's see. How long do I need before they shift? Hold on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It gets frustrating. But oh, it's by fun. the way, by the way, my shifters shift every night except the new moon. Oh, clever. That's why, that's why it's a half moon cycle or a moon and a half because because they they he he's struggling every night saying no to the to the moon goddess and the only night that her influence is not forced trying to force him to shift is the new moon and he has this little issue of um because of something that happened on the new moon he has waking nightmares on the night of the new moon. So he never gets to sleep? I'm no, feeling really bad for this guy. He never gets to sleep at night. He gets to sleep during the day, just not during the night. <laughs> so Vampires so are going to start hanging out with him. <laughs> right? The um, Yeah, I have a, one of the ones I'm doing is uh, the werewolves in this one are, they can shift whenever they want. People mm -hmm. just think they only shift in the full moon because they can see them better then. <laughs> I'm like, no, you morons. We're always out there. You just can't see us. I like it. I thought it was funny. So that's what I created. <laughs> Something to shake it up just a little. Exactly. Um, let's see. So we talked about going out with your character. I was wondering, we we're talking about um, conventions, right? So mm -hmm. we talked, that's where you found the art on your wall. You were talking earlier. You met the artist yeah. at a convention. So we met Jenny at conventions. That's where we yes. met her. Mm -hmm. So we meet lots of people, people at conventions. <laughs> oh, I'm know. wondering, do you have a favorite experience that you'd like to share? Um, so can I share two? There's yes, of course you can. Okay. This is your time. So, so, um, 
so the first one I'll share is is about um, it. There, when back when I only had one book, back when it was Piece of Evan Missing Air, and so um, for those who don't know, missing my original book was Piece of Evan Missing Air. I eventually broke it up into what is now Piece of Evan and Gift of War. So Piece of Evan Missing Air used to be two hundred thousand words. Um, yeah, <laughs> hence why I broke it up. Um, <laughs> But there was a convention where I sold a copy of Piece of Ellen Missing Air, I believe on Saturday. The lady comes up to my table the next day. She says, I loved it. I'm looking forward to the next one. And I'm like, <laughs> she, 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 she let me know she was a speed reader. <laughs> No pressure or anything. No pressure or anything. Um, so yeah, that was that was the first fun one. I mean, it, it's great to it's great to at least be told the same, basically the same day day. That it's like I like this. I'm, I'm look, I I I really like it. Uh, <laughs> but like, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I I don't know when I'll get the next one out. Um, <laughs> uh, the other one, the other one was okay. So so the first year, I did conventions. I was so desperate, and and, and sometimes I, I, I rebuke myself for this, but I was so desperate to get into conventions that I did, so let, let me make sure I know which convention I'm talking about. I think this is Anime Matsuri. They had sold out of Artist Alley, so I got a dealer's room table. Ooh. One, I have one book, de dealer's room table. Yeah, that, that I, was, I was like, this, is, this was a bad idea. Yeah, but, for those who don't know, that's a huge difference in price for that table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so... Um, so I ended up, I ended up having a dealer's room table, kind of sadly placed because I was like right at the end of a row and anyway, but so I, 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 I did sell a few copies anyway. So a couple of years later, I, I wasn't able to get into anime Matsuri the year after that, but I did the two years later, I, I set up my table. I'm there. I I'm there. I don't remember when it was during the convention, but I had a I had a young woman run up to my table. It was like I found it. <laughs> <laughs> She'd bought my book two years before at Anime Matsuri and had been looking for me. <laughs> That's awesome. She's like, I want yes. the next ones. So, and I think she ended up replacing it because by then I had I had broken up. Change the covers. Well, I, yeah, I, I'd broken it up into the two books, changed the covers, had the third book out. And so I think she ended up buying all three. <laughs> it was like, it was like, okay, that, that, that makes me feel happy. <laughs> it's nice knowing somebody likes your work. Yes. It's nice. It's what keeps us going. Exactly. Yeah, don't ever be afraid. I had someone say they were afraid to tell their author that they love mm -hmm. their work. I'm like, why would oh. you? That's what we want to hear. Please exactly. tell them. Sometimes you you never know that writer might be ready to quit that day. And you tell him, I love your work. That's, you know, oh, well, I guess I'll keep writing. Thank you very much. Right. So let's see. Roger wants to know, what's the tipping point to making a major change to the world for the story? Let's say, example, I really want this to happen to a character, but I'll have to rewrite several chapters. Well, okay. that's a tough question to answer there, Roger. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um. So I can... I think I think it's easier to answer this by example. Okay. Um, there is so so in my Moonshifter story, um, there is there are these stones that that so I had at one point like three different points where there were important stones. So you have stones that the knights would wear that would basically react to the the presence of um, Moonshifters, and then there were stones that basically um affected uh, affected shifter borns who didn't shift um and kind of brought out certain attributes of their animal uh, basically in this case it was it was the snakes the the um the dark sliders the the snake clan um were wearing were, would have these these stones that would basically in human form would make their skin peel and the skin was a good um, med medicinal. And then, um, see if I can remember what the third stone was. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I don't remember because I changed the, it for a reason. Yeah, I changed it for a reason. Um, and then the, there was a, and then the, there was a third stone that allowed the, um, I think it was this one that allowed the the Fleetfoot, who was a, a fox, um, to be able to uh, have visions, even though she couldn't, or rather hear prophecies, uh, even though she couldn't shift. 
So I ended up, I ended, because I had all these stones, I was like, wait, could these possibly be all the same thing? And so I went through and, and figured out that, yes, they could and, and connected them all together. Um, but there was a lot of, there was a lot of work to it and a lot of, um, figuring out how things worked and, and, and the layout. And I, and I think I still have to go through to kind of name how every clan is affected just so I have that awareness as I'm going through on the second draft. Um, but I, so with, with all of that in mind of, of, okay, this is a lot of trouble to go through. Is this something I really want to do? I actually did a, what if there were no stones um, and, 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 to, and went from there and basically convinced myself that yes, I needed the stones. <laughs> so now I must fix it. I'll tell you, everything seems like a pain once you're done writing it, but you know, people are going to read it and you know, they're going to think about it and you want them to get the best experience. So you know what you do? You either don't publish that book because it's all too much work. <laughs> I've done that too. Or you fix it. Those are really your choices. You right. fix it or you put it in a drawer and you write the next one. There, there's also, there's also for me and, and, and I mean, cause I offer the service myself is, is just, is just finding someone to talk to, talk through things about. Yes. Because it's amazing how much just like an hour of talking will do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I think the, the very first night that Ian, and I hope she doesn't mind me mentioning this, we've, we've talked about this before, but the very first night Ina's and I met, met in person because we met, we met through an online group and decided we really connected. And we, and so the first time we met in person, we spent four hours talking about her story and she came out of there with a, <laughs> with a, a lot cleaner layout going on <laughs> and it's like it's it's amazing what it's amazing what you can do with just an hour or two of writing or of, mm -hmm. of talking about it makes a huge mm -hmm. difference and the more you work out before you get the writing done the less you work you have to do after you finish the writing so right. yep definitely. you gotta do the world building somewhere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i recommend before, first sometimes it's during i do a lot of mine during actually um, oh nice because as I'm writing, it it pops up with the problems that I need to face. Because um, Moonshifters, I, I told you I had that 60,000 words, right, after a month and a half. That yeah. was actually the false first half, or first draft. <laughs> I actually had to restart because um, we published our second anthology of the Rogues, uh, like a sequel to the Rogues and Wildfire series, We or anthology. We had Rogues Before and Beyond. Mm -hmm. And I had a short story in that, which was like, the night before or, or a different perspective. And, and I found out two big, um, two big details that made a whole lot of change to the story <laughs> because suddenly the main character was not a single child and, <laughs> and he, and the, the king, the, the, uh, the king actually loved the queen. And so that spilled out a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of things from there. <laughs> So that's the take three. Sometimes it's just easier to start over too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Writing's a lot of work. It is definitely. But obviously it must be worth it or we wouldn't be doing it. Right. 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 It's worth it. Right. Somebody tell it me is. it's worth it. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. We are just about done. So I have a couple more questions. First, you always wear the same purple suit with gray vest, the tie, the hat, the cane, all of these when you work at the conventions. It's like, it's what I see you in my head. That's what I see you with. So my question is, why is this dress important to you? So I, I, I love how you say that because some of that might actually be changing over time. Um, oh, great. Thanks, well, Todd. I'm well, used to it now. I won't recognize you. <laughs> well, probably the first day I would wear that anyway because I have to set up the table. And I do not want to be setting up the table in my nice wedding suit. <laughs> that is very true. But so, so... So as 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 I pointed out before, I am trans, and and I I pretty much figured out my my truth through my author self before I ever acknowledged it and accepted it and was out about it in my personal self. So so the the top the 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 pinstripe suit and the purp and well purple, <laughs> I, I'm purple, you know that right. Um, <laughs> The, the purple suit, the tie, um, has, has been, basically has been manifestations of that. Um, I, rem I actually in college, um, 
my first my first semester of college, someone did a presentation on how to tie a tie in one of my classes. And I was like, that's interesting. I want to do that. And I spent like that at, at least that entire semester every day wearing a tie with a T-shirt and jeans and sneakers and baseball cap. <laughs> it was now your look. It was now my look. Um, I I didn't start color coordinating until I started wearing ties. <laughs> And you were like, hold on, I get this. So it, it, so it, it, it has um, progressed over time. So it sounds like you said you're going to wear your wedding suit. So it's even gotten yeah. fancier. Is that what yeah. you're telling me? Yes. As one of, one of, the, one of the nice things about, um, well, I, I think I might need to lo lose a little bit of weight to make sure I can fit into it properly. But yes. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't 20, we all. 2020 has. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but yeah, so, so one, of my, one of the ideas as I was getting this wedding suit was that I didn't, I, it wasn't just for the wedding. I could use it for, and I have worn it at a convention before. I think there's a picture somewhere on Facebook of me wearing it at um, DFW Con, the, which was the last, mm -hmm. it was the last year DFW Con was running. Gotcha. Excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing that as conventions start again, because they're gonna. Ah, and I have, I am actually going to be able to be at Comic Palooza this year. Yes. We signed up for a booth, so I have no idea. So I have something else that week. So it's going through, if we get a booth, we're going to Comic Palooza. If we don't get a booth, then I'm going to my thing in Colorado. So I'm waiting to see if I hear a booth, if I get a booth I or not. I just reserved a table today. So nice. you might look for that email soon. <laughs> Okay, I'll keep looking. Because because I think it's limited. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I sent it out, right? Like, I, yeah. I, I applied, but I, I haven't heard back yet, so. <sighs> Cross my fingers. Oh, Dave says he loves your glasses. Thank you. These are another staple. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. The, the, the thing, I mean, even if I'm not wearing my full vest suit, people can recognize me by my glasses and my hat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. Even, even though I've shaved my head now. <laughs> That's right. I'm sorry, Todd. You are not allowed to get LASIK. <laughs> we won't know who you are. You'll have to wear just fake ones with just glass or something. Right. I mean, it's just not going to work. I'm, I'm, I'm dreading the day I have to, I have to get a new prescription because, because a lot of eye places won't, won't use the old frames, and, and these were from, these were actually from a junk. I used to work in an eyeglass repair shop, so these were actually oh. from a junk box at an eyeglass really? repair shop. Yes. And oh. so that was how I got the lenses, or I got the lenses through the eyeglass repair shop. And these were actually t got tinted lenses. So it's like, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. I think we're in the lightning round. Let's see. We have, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Generally chocolate. If I have my family's chocolate sauce recipe, vanilla is just fine. <laughs> Yummy. That sounds delicious. What is the first thing you put in your grocery cart as an impulse buy? Ooh, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Just whatever it is, it will be sweet. Okay, that's a good answer. I like it. Oreos, ding dongs, uh, cherry turnovers. I mean, like I said, it's sugar. <laughs> <laughs> it's there and it's sugar. It's in my cart. What is your least favorite chore around the house? Ooh. Um, probably anything to do with floors. <laughs> Sounds fair. I mean, we can wear shoes. Who cares? They're fine. Uh, coffee or tea? Tea. I do not drink coffee. Oh, can I do hot chocolate? <laughs> no. No. Oh, man, she does not follow. He does not follow directions, do you, Todd? I'm telling you. I'm no, no. It's alcoholic. you could say hot chocolate. Of course you can. <laughs> um, let's see. The the uh, what's the last one? Oh, what music do you listen to? Um, generally. Generally poppy. I mean, I, I I think my I think my Pandora thing is set to is set to um, my song "Know What You Did in the Dark" by Fall Out Boy. So anything that Pandora connects to that, <laughs> which you know can range can range through. So I, I think I heard a I think I heard a couple of Queen songs a couple of days ago. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, that works. I can that see Queen with Fall Out Boy. That works for me. Um, but when I'm, when I'm, so when I'm writing, it has to be wordless because, because my brain can't do word music and word writing at the same time. It's the, the literary function. You have to have one or the other. On that, we're and, the same. Soundtracks for me. I have to listen to soundtracks with no words. I do a lot of, I do a lot of, um, like, uh, Lindsey Sterling and, and two cellos and other ones that are 
that are based on uh, pop songs. So, so if I know the song, I'm in trouble. I'm, I'm, I risk uh, actually singing or kind of singing the words in my head, <laughs> which then I know I need to change channels. <laughs> it's like, it's too distracting now. This isn't going to work. I must go back. All right. Yes. The, the, they agree with you that the audience loves Lindsay Sterling too. Yes. Yeah. We actually saw Lindsay Sterling in concert. She was pretty mm-hmm. amazing. I have to say, you know, right. when there were this thing called concerts. Yeah. The, used to exist, we, I heard. we had a, I, I played, uh, I had Lindsay Sterling's round, um, round table rivalry, rivalry for my coming into my, um, reception for my wedding. Oh, <laughs> and I wish I'd spaced my people out more so the song would have lasted longer. <laughs> You're like, I wasn't done. I want to hear more. Right. <laughs> it's fantastic. Well, Todd, you've been awesome. We have the last question for you, and that is where can fans find you and your work? So, um, unfortunately, I am still in the process of getting my website up. That's theodorentinker.com. It currently says work in progress, but <laughs> or coming soon or whatever those things say. Um, but you can definitely find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Theodore N. Tinker. Um, I have a Facebook group that we that I drop. Oh, I share a lot of stuff that is uh, that can be a t- um that is either related to my writing and my editing or can be associated with world building. Um, that is the fiction tinkers guild. So facebook.com slash groups slash fiction tinkers guild. And, um, and then you can find me on Facebook and Twitter at, uh, Theodore N tinker or at TNT editing, uh, TN tinker editing is the at, um, for my, uh, my editing pages for my author and editing pages. Perspective words. <laughs> I always say I'm a writer, not a speaker. I apologize. <laughs> the words come out as they may. I think that's everywhere. Of course, and of course, you can find my books and stuff at balanceofseven.com. Um, that's where we have we have all of our uh, books, both, both all the ones I I I write and all the ones I publish <laughs> as a press. Excellent. I do a lot of editing. <laughs> Yes, yes, I do as well. As one publisher to another, I feel you. All right, so let's thank you. Let's everyone thank Todd so much for coming. And please, when you do get his work, don't forget to review it. Reviewing mm-hmm. is a present you give to your authors. Also, don't forget to review this podcast wherever you get podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitch and subscribe on YouTube. And we want to give a special shout out and thank you to our subscribers, DH Dunn, and a new one for tonight, Eight of Nine. Thank you very much for subscribing. And we will see you next week when we have William. Galaney on. He's going to be a treat. 